Hello, my friends. I'm the Note Self Guy, and welcome to the channel. Now, normally I tend to stay away from politics as I am a Christian YouTuber, but in this case, I needed to make an exception. Why? Because we are in trouble. Last night, like many of you, I watched the 2024 presidential debate between Donald J. Trump and Joe Biden. These are the two candidates that we have running for president for 2024. Now, I know some of y'all are probably thinking, are these the only candidates that we have? Is there anybody else out there who want to run for president? Come on, man. There got to be somebody else out there. Now, Joe Biden was a little slow in his speech. Uh, he seemed to be a little slow with his responses. And quite frankly, he seemed a little bit incoherent at times. And Donald Trump rarely answered the questions. And yet he kept boasting about his accomplishments during his presidency. Were they facts or alternative facts? You make the call. Now, as a Christian, I got to think it. Now, I know that's a little bit dangerous, but then I thought, who would Jesus vote for? Trump or Biden? That's a good question. You know, they say with age comes wisdom. So I decided to go out and get the advice of two very senior gentlemen. But I got to warn you now, these fellows right here, well, you'll see, roll the tape. the most important election in the history of this country. I know I don't look it, but I was born during the Great Depression. Now to your question, Sonny. How would Jesus vote in the 2020 election? Well, first of all, he'd probably get rid of 80% of the politicians because most of them aren't worth two dead flies. And he'd probably put himself in charge. But short of that, here's what I think he'd do. Well, we got three candidates. Donald J. Trump, Joe Biden, and Kanye West. Well, let's forget about that Kanye West. Well, I don't think Jesus was a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, or a Tea Partier. I think he would select the person who most represented himself when he was here. What am I talking about, mister? I'm talking about the fruits of the spirit. Which one of these candidates best represents love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know no man's perfect, but there should be evidence of fruits of the spirit in that person's life. Now, for you geniuses out there who are saying we're not hiring a pastor in chief, but rather a commander in chief. I got news for you, doctor. How can a person govern effectively without having God in their life? Think about it. All the decisions they make will affect the masses. That means white people, black people, brown people, rich people, poor people and everybody in between. How can they govern effectively if they do not know the Lord? If we are to have a chance at heaven here on earth, we have to elect someone who is for the people, all people. Listen here, Sonny, there's plenty of videotape and recorded history on both Donald J. Trump and Joe Biden. I suggest you do your research. That way you can evaluate their spiritual fruit. Listen, mister, before you start evaluating their spiritual fruit, let me bring something to your attention. Now listen, Joe Biden is old. Ain't nothing wrong with being old. I'm old my dog myself. And for all you young people out there, you should be aspiring to be old. But in Joe's case, that brother has earned the right to retire. Joe, it's time to sit back and enjoy and reflect upon the good service that you have provided over the years. It's time to throw them in, Joe. As for Donald Trump, what kind of a man sleeps with a porn star while his wife is pregnant and then lies about it and then pays her husband money? I got news for you, doctor. You should have paid him more because it didn't work. Stormy Daniels told everybody. Now listen, what a man does between the sheets and behind closed doors is his business. But I gotta tell you, if you can't manage your own household, how you gonna manage this great country of ours? Listen, Sonny, too many people have died and sacrificed much just so you can have the right to vote. It is your civil duty and responsibility to vote, man. Vote! Vote, I say vote! You know, I have to agree with BT. This presidential election is critical to the success of our nation. Sometimes I feel like I'm on an episode of The Twilight Zone, but then I watch the news and realize, nah, brother man, this is real life. Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. For there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Romans 13.1 In other words, we have to pay taxes. And we are governed by the government. God has ordained human government. 
Also, since we are a democracy, that gives us the right to vote, and we should exercise that right. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 10, verse 27. Now, since we're governed by the government, doesn't it make sense to vote for leaders who have a strong relationship with God? When you go to the ballot box, don't forget to take Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 with you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Good Christ told Moses, man, it is impossible to govern a nation without God's guidance and a good moral compass. The great Maya Angela once said, when people show you who they are, believe them. Again, examine their spiritual fruit and pray before you go to the ballot box. Remember, doctor, prayer is a direct line from your mouth to God's ear. Now get out there and rock the boat. Do it, mister.